yeah hello and welcome back to the channel um, so in the last video on our to do clean architecture series we looked at use cases right and in this video we'll be looking at the presentation layer so um, from the previous video we created a data and the domain layer in our to do feature we talked about use cases we didn't finish working on our use cases because we created just we created just one use case which is the add to do use case right and just before we get into the presentation layer i would want us to complete the other use cases in the use case we just have um, a, an abstract class that takes in a type right and then the parameter of that use case and then this particular um, abstract class has a method called call and then this method is expected to return either a failure or that type in which we pass to the use case. Also, this call takes in the params we pass to the use case. Now, in this example of our add to do um, use case, realize that the params and then the to do, um, the params and the type are all the same. So this might sometimes cause confusion. So in order to fix that, you can just create another type a class called params that takes in a type so this is going to be a generic class and then has the data on it right so it takes in a type which is the particular type of param you want to pass in and then it has a data field on it and that data field is the same as the params you are passing in so how do you use this particular params or generic params so you come to the add and instead of this being to do which will cause confusion because we don't know which one is the params and which one is the type we want to be retained we can just come here and then do something like params and then pass in the to do like this and now in our call um, we are going to have an error over here because now we want params instead of just the to do this is going to be of type params right so you can type it, you can further type it to params. And now we know that params have data on it. So to do the data, right? Which is the actual um, data on this to do when we use the params as um, a class. So there's the little refactoring we will do over here. And the remaining use cases are going to be similar. So I'm going to copy this right, just really quick because we didn't do it in the previous video. And then the use cases, I'm going to create another file called update or edit. So let's start with delete first. And in the delete, I'm just going to paste a similar thing inside. So we are going to rename this to delete to do use case. And as I said in the previous video, um, the conversion use case may be redundant in um, some situation so just because this is a, um, a first time tutorial right or this is the first time you are learning clean architecture you may just keep the use cases so that you don't get confused but then when you work with other projects you may decide to either include the name use case in um, the class so let's import our types i'm going to import the use case and then import the repository as well now in the constructor we have to make sure that the name is delayed to do use case as well and then we can remove this right now let's have a look at our repository realize that they are all expecting um, to do to be returned out so we can import our to do here which is the type we want to be retained and then this is the type we are passing when we are deleting so when we are deleting a to-do we passing the whole to-do object so we can just um create one missing override if you're in vs code we have similar um option like that and then we have our params which is to do we can call it params in this case and then we are going to return our repository dot delete and then we pass in our params dot data which is of type to do right so when you come to the add you do the same thing 
um, you can change this text over here to palms if you are not comfortable with the fact that it's called to do so you have something like palms or data now we did the same thing for all of them so i'm going to quickly copy the rest and then paste them Now, when it comes to the list to do use case, right, we are not just expecting a to do out, but we are expecting a list of to do. So, a list of to do like this, and then the call um, takes in nothing, right? So, when we call the get all, we don't pass in anything. So, in our prompts, we can just forget about this, right? And then um, passing now void um, so you can either create a special palms for no palms like this so in a case where you don't have any palms you can create a class no palms and then the data is void like this or you can just pass in void as usual right so depending on which one you want to use right for now i'm going to use the no palms so no palms like this and then um i would have to that means i'd have to clear this and generate it again no palms and that is going to return per string that gets all Right. so this is how our use cases are going to be now back to the presentation layer or at least we don't have it yet but then we have the data and then the domain layer the last layer for this is our presentation layer now the presentation layer is going to contain your ui logic your ui itself and then everything related to it so your widgets your reusable components all are going to be in the presentation layer so let's create a new directory called presentation and now in this directory we are going to have other sub directories right so one of them is going to be pages and you can call this either pages or views depending on where you are coming from or your background so if you are used to pages you can call it pages if i used to view you can call it views what matters is that it points to your um, pages itself right so let's create our directory again call widgets and that is going to contain all our reusable components now we can have another folder in the presentation that will hold our logic right so in that folder we can perform change in state or whatsoever logic you want to perform calling our use cases all those to be done in that particular folder so we have something called controller and depending on where you are coming from that's um, which state management tool you are using you may decide to call this either controller or block right or anything else which is going to stand for your state management so just add a directory for managing your state or if you want to go with the good old days set states i wouldn't recommend that but that's no problem i'm going to create another directory and i'm going to call my controller right and this is going to contain um the class for managing the state of this particular feature so create a new that file called to do controller and as i said earlier this could be to do block to do whatsoever depending on which state management you want to use for this now note that um, when it comes to plain architecture it's independent of state management it's not really about state management so you can use any state management you want to use it doesn't really matter you can just go without state management it's not much of a big deal now in our pages this is where we are going to have our page for now we have a hello world displayed on our screen and that's coming from the main dot that file as you can see i have an app bar here and that's rendering the hello world text um, 
as well as the to do claim. So this is the scaffold for what we are seeing currently. Now I'm going to close this and close all these and then come to the pages directory. So pages, I'm going to create a new that file and call it home or home page. You can add the pages or not depending on your naming convention. So home page or just home. So let me just go with home. And again, the structure of this page is going to be based on which state management you are using. Right. So if you are using something like get text, you may extend get view, right, and then pass in your controller. If you are using Weber port, um, you may extend different widgets. So either consumer widgets or whatever widgets um, you use in get I'm um, sorry in river port. In this particular case, I'm just going to have a stateless widget for now. And I'm going to call it home page. And that widget is going to return a scaffold. Right. And then just the same thing we had previously. But then without a const. Now in the main dot that file, I want to start from the home page. So I'm going to move this and then add my home page here. So I don't have any UI for this particular um, to do app. So we would have to come up with something very simple. First note, I want to have a button that will allow us to add a to do. So just in the scaffold, I want to have a floating action button. And then it has an icon of add, right? So this is what to help us to add our to do. And we also want to have a field where we can have our to do here and then have the to do's added just below it. So this is not um, about the UI, like the concept is not about the UI. So don't worry much about it. The UI may be totally different, but then the whole idea is how we are going to call your use cases in your presentation layer and how you are going to manage your state right so depending on which state management you are using as i said earlier your implementation may differ a bit but then it still ends at the same goal for this particular tutorial i want to just go with getx right because it's much easier and then simple not necessarily because it's the best so i'm going to my prospect.yaml and to add the getx which I should have added already so i have the get package added here and if you want to follow along with the get text package you can follow along with it by adding the get package and running flutter pub get or you could follow along also with any state management of your choice it doesn't really have um, anything to do with state management in this case so with the get text package we manage states using controllers I'm coming to create a controller called to do controller which extends getx controller and if I don't get the name right which means this getx um, and I have a problem with the naming so uh, let me try importing the package So get X controller like this. And this is how we manage it. Right? So um, to just implement a simple counter in getx so that you have a that you have a fair idea of the state management in getx, I can have a count variable like this and then create a function called increment that just increment this count variable. And now if I want to display the total count on the page, I come to my home and I have to have access this particular controller in my home page now that's the concept of dependency injection with dependency injection we want to have the logic of um, another class in a, another class we want to have the logic of a class in another class without necessarily passing it through the constructor right so we want to access um, this to do controller in this particular stateless widget but then we don't want to pass it through the constructor of this home page widget. So with getx, it's much easier to do. We just call getx put and 
this will put our to do controller right so we have to rename this to to do controller and then also import the getx package and we have to move the cons from here um, right so um, back in the home page we don't have um, the cons over here so that's right and now in this logic which we will name to controller we can access our count variable over here so just in the center instead of showing the text hello world i'm going to show a count so controller dot count right dot value so the value is what we want from this count variable not the actual count and that's because we are using observables and i don't get much into get text for this series but then just something so that you could um, understand what we'll be doing next so we have two ways of managing states in get text that is using simple state management or reactive state management so this is reactive state management and with that in order to get the actual value of what you want you use the dot value property this is complaining because it is an int and we can convert it to a string easily by doing the string interpolation so controller dot count dot value right and now on the on press of this we can pass in the function which is controller dot um, did we call it increase count um increments right so controller dot increment like this so we have an error and let's hot restart to see if it fixes yeah so hot restart and fix that increasing this doesn't actually do anything we still see zero over there in order to um, show the change we wrap this text in an obx which is trying to tell get text that this is observable so whenever it changes updates the ui so it's just much easier like that and now when we press on it realize that the count variable is changing so if i increase the style text style yeah so this is how simple it is to manage states in getx that's why i'm choosing getx for this particular um section of the tutorial yeah so this video is getting very lengthy so we are going to end here and in the next one we'll look at how to call use cases within our controllers and then also how to um work on dependency injection other ways we can go about it thank you very much for watching if you like it hit the like button and subscribe and comment if you don't get anything see you